I'd really like my visitors to focus on my slideshow when they come to the website. So it would be nice to have the images appear to take up the width and height of the page, regardless of the size of my window. So I'm gonna go ahead and take care of that in this video. Now, first I'm gonna go to the index.html document and find the area on my page where we have this div called carousel inner. And we're gonna add a class right here called full height. This is the class that's gonna make that area of the screen appear to be the full height of the browser window. Now the full width, it takes care of automatically, as you can see, it doesn't matter what width I make this, that image is gonna cover up the whole width. It's the height that's usually the problem. So next up, we're gonna to go to the script and we'll create a new variable here. This variable is going to be set to, so we'll call it w height, and I'm gonna set it to the window. jQuery has a method called height that allows you to get the height of the window easily and it takes care of some incompatibilities between browsers. So let's go ahead and add a comment. And what we'll do next is modify any element in the page with a class of full height. And we will change the CSS parameters, specifically the height parameter, and make it our W height that we calculated up there. All right, so I'm gonna save. So what you'll notice on the right is that the carousel photo remained the same size However, the container of that element is the size of the browser window. So that's pretty cool, but it doesn't look that great. What it should do is make this image cover whatever width of its parent container we currently have. And we've already done something sort of like that. If you remember down here in this section with these photos, we had some containers and this width of the photos and height of the photos adjusts to fit that container pretty nicely. It sort of centers the image within the container. Now the thing about these photos is that they're not images, they're actually background images. And that's what we're gonna have to do to get our carousel to work. We're gonna have to modify the images right here in the normal carousel to be background images. So let's go ahead and write the style that's gonna make this work. As I said, if you remember from the testimonials, our styles look something like this. We set the background size to cover and the URL to the URL of the image. And we ask them to be center center. That way they center within that space and obviously not to repeat. So we're gonna do a, a similar style at the top and we're gonna call it featured item. So each one of those images is in a div with a class of item. That's where we need the image that's gonna be the full width and height of the browser to be. So the trick that we did before is use the background size property, set it to cover, and then we'll do background repeat, set it to no repeat, and then we'll set the background position to center, center. This is exactly what we had done with the testimonials, but we're doing it all in separate lines. The reason we're doing this all in separate lines is normally when you do it in one line, you have to put the name of the image and then each one of these different elements, no repeat center center. And we can't do that because the images are gonna be different and we're gonna be doing that with jQuery or JavaScript. So we can't put them in this style. So background position center center, and then we'll set the width to 100% and the height also to a 100%. Remember that's gonna be the width and height of the container. So now that we do that, it's not really gonna do anything to our page yet. We're gonna need to create the jQuery that converts our images to background images. That one's gonna be a little tricky. So I'll go right here and it doesn't really matter where it goes. So I'll just do it right up here and we'll say replace IMG inside carousels with a background image, right? That's what we want to do. So what we need to do is go ahead and target our element. What we want to target is the element with an ID of featured. That's the carousel. We're going to find the item element and then any of the images inside the item element. And then for each of those, we're going to execute a callback or this function literal that's going to do something for us. And then in here, we'll create a variable. We'll call it image source. We need to find out the location of each image 
so that we can convert it from where it is right now into the parent's background. So let's go ahead and just type that in. I think it'll make more sense when I do it. So we'll say this attribute, and we want to find the source attribute of each of the images. So remember right now, as we go through the carousel, we have asked for any element with an ID of featured, which is this particular carousel, and then find all of the elements with a class of item, and then locate each one of the images. And right now we're asking to store this source attribute, which tells you where the image is. What we want is to put that source attribute as the background, not of this image, but actually the parent. We want this div technically to have this image as the background. So that's what we're targeting right now. So let's see, attribute source, and then, so we're gonna need to type the location of the element and pass it along to the background image. So what we've done here is we had said, okay, right now we're inside each of these images. So now I want to look at the parent of each of those images. Those would be the diffs with the class of item. And I want to modify the CSS of each one of those diffs and set the background image attribute to be the location of the image that used to be in the image tags. So let's go ahead and save that and see what happens. So now you can see that what it's doing, is it's taking each one of these images and placing it as the background element. So if I navigate through these, you'll see a copy of the image and then sort of the copy of the parent container. This is the div with a copy of that same image. And the nice thing about that second image is that it's the full width and height of the browser, no matter what I make this. So that's actually working almost 100% except that now we've got two copies of the images. So what we need to do next is just remove the images. And to do that right now, as we are going through each image, we can refer to the image using the this object or the this parameter in jQuery. We just say this remove, and that will get rid of each one of those images. So all we're seeing now is the background images. And as we navigate, we can see them there. If I make this any wider, notice that it's still gonna look great. And they are pretty much the width and height of the browser now. Now there is something else that we need to fix. And that is what happens when maybe somebody loads up the website like this. So I'm gonna refresh. So now if I make this taller, notice that it's not adjusting to the height of the window as I make the window bigger. And so if you want it to adjust and always be the full height and width of the window, you're gonna have to do that by adding a little bit more code. Not a lot, we're almost done. So adjust height of full height elements on window resize. And again, jQuery comes to the rescue. It has an excellent window resize function here. And we'll use a function literal or a callback, whatever you wanna call that. And when the window resizes, what I really wanna do is what I did up here, which is find any element with the class of full height and modify its height so that it's the height of the window. That would be the height of the current window, which means that we have to recalculate the window height. So I'm gonna grab this right here and paste it down here, but I need to make sure that I remove the variable because it's not really necessary to create a new variable in here. We just need to modify the one that we have. So we have a variable we created up here called W height, and we're just gonna modify the value of that variable to be the height of the window when somebody resizes the document. So let's go ahead and save that. You can see that now this is the size of the window, the full height and width of the window. And if we make this smaller, that looks great. If we make it bigger, it always retains the full height and width of the window, which is exactly what we want. Let's go ahead and refresh it like this. You'll notice that even when I make it taller now, normally you will be seeing the rest of the document, but this window, if it's resized, it's always gonna be the full height and width. And as soon as your users scroll, they're gonna see the rest of your content, which is a really nice effect for a modern website.